dream, we the people on UST Party Radio. Welcome to UST Party Radio. God, country, and we the people. With Bill Gruber and Cass Taylor. You know, uh, uh, Bill Federer uh, is the president of AmeriSearch and the host of the American Minute. He's also a Christian historian and an ongoing contributor for the UST Party radio program. So, hi, Bill. How are you today? Hi, Bill. I thought this would be an appropriate uh, topic to discuss here because you have been observing what's been going on, the, the threats of building, or see, even beyond a threat level, actually, of building uh, what's a 13-story mega mosque at Ground Zero. Tell us a little right. bit uh, what's going on there. Well, um, whenever Muslims conquer a country, they take their most prominent spot and build a mosque on it. And, of course, it started with Muhammad when he conquered Mecca, which was a pagan city, and their most prominent spot was the Kaaba, a square building that housed over 360 different gods. He cleaned out all of them except for one, the Hubal, which was the moon god, and um, they had this rock they thought had fallen from the moon, and they would kiss it and walk around it and bow to it. And he preserved that, but uh, but nevertheless, that is um, a show of dominance. And then when the Muslims conquered Jerusalem... We're talking they, about when? What, what years? 638 A.D. is when the Muslims conquered Jerusalem. 691 is when they built a mosque on the most prominent Jewish spot, the Temple Mount. And then when the Muslims conquered Cordoba, Spain, St. Vincent's was the great uh, Christian church... The Muslims destroyed it, and upon its foundation, they built the Mosque of Cordoba, which is sort of interesting because the mosque they're building in um, New York City, they're calling it the Cordoba Mosque. But then when the Muslims conquered uh, Constantinople, uh, they turned the beautiful St. Sophia's, Hagia Sophia's, this, the largest church in Christendom for a 1,000 years, 160 feet high, 102 foot across a dome, four acres of gold mosaics. They covered it over with whitewash and Koran verses, and they turned the place into a mosque. And then when the Muslims conquered Greece, they turned the um, Parthenon, uh, which was uh, the big temple on top of the Acropolis, the hill there in Greece. Uh, they turned it into a mosque. And sort of an incidental story, uh, Islam is a religious system, a political system, and a military system. And you cannot separate them because Muhammad was a religious leader, a political leader, and a military leader. Muhammad fought in 66 battles and raids. Muhammad even used a catapult when he attacked cities, like the city of Al-Taif. And when he was told the catapult was killing innocent women and children, Muhammad's response was, they are among them. So they got to be killed, too. So suicide bombers today say it's okay to kill innocent people to advance Islam because Muhammad did. And so since there is no authority in Islam that can split Muhammad and say, look, we're only going to imitate his religious part of his life. We're no longer going to imitate his political and military life. Since that's impossible, the fundamental ones say, hey, we are going to imitate Muhammad all the way. And so when they build a mosque, it's not just a religious center. It is a political and a military center. Well, let me let me uh, stop you here for just a second. So, uh, by what you have illustrated through uh, your description, uh, you you are intimating then that uh, the Muslims feel they've conquer, conquered New York City and, as such, are building a mosque. And when you say at Ground Zero, is it truly at Ground Zero? Before you jump into that, let me read to you a quote that was uh, issued by the uh, director of the uh, Human and Civil Rights Division of the Muslim American Society of Freedom Foundation. And the person's name is uh, Ibrahim Rami. Um, and he, this person said, We're saying Muslims have a legitimate role to play in the social fabric of this country. And the suggestion there that it's really uh, as a... Uh, you know, a, a peace gesture, and, and, and you're saying that uh, that's not necessarily so. Well, it, it is so, except their definition of peace <laughs> is different than yours and mine's uh. definition of, of peace. Our definition of peace is different groups that don't believe the same thing, just learning how to get along. A faithful Muslim's definition of peace is when the whole world submits to the will of Allah, there is peace. In other words, when Islam's enemies are defeated, there's peace. There's nobody left to fight. Of course there's peace. And so their view of world peace is world Islam. And so when they say it's a religion of peace, it's, it's a religion of submission, where they force those to uh, come under the submission to Allah. And whether it's through persuasion or through money or through education or through media or through violence, 
that the whole goal for 1,400 years has been one way or another to bring the world into submission to Allah. So Turkey used to be Christian. It was the Byzantine Christian Empire. Today it is Muslim. So what's the message? Okay, give us what's the message here for we Americans that are seeing this ground zero threat going on uh, on on the mosque. What words do you have to say, being an historian and uh, a guy who loves the Constitution of the United States? We've got about four minutes, so just know that as you give your explanation. Oh, it's conquest. It is, uh, you know, again, you look at uh, all these other different areas of the world, how they've conquested. Iran used to be Zoroastrian. Uh, North Africa and the Middle East used to be Christian. I mean, Egypt was Coptic Christian for six centuries before the Muslims took it over. Now there's like 12% Christian there. Uh, Afghanistan and Central Asia were Buddhist. Now there are Muslim. Uh, you look at all these different areas. Pakistan used to be Hindu. Now it is Muslim. So all the previous civilizations are taken over. They don't think they're they don't just think their religion is superior, but they believe their language and their culture is superior. And so that's why they blew up those um, Buddhas that were in the mountainside there. Now, now, what, now, was, this, was this a slow encroachment in each of those uh, cases, a, a slow encroachment of, uh, of the other societies? Um, the, first, it was lightning fast. They went from the tents of Arabia to Paris in a 100 years. And that's because they had a military advantage called the stirrup, and they fought on horseback with armor and and swords and these scimitar swords, these curved swords made out of Damascus steel. Then uh, the curve was brilliant because no matter where you hit, the full impact of your swing would be at that point of impact. Where the Europeans were using these straight swords, which were duller, and uh, and they were forged, so it took two hands to wield them, and and they were still on foot. And so the Muslim cavalry just charged across with their Arabian horses across Spain, across the Pyrenees Mountains. They came within 170 miles of Paris before they were stopped at the Battle of Tours in 732 A.D. by Charles Martel, the grandfather of Charlemagne. They went from the tents of Arabia in 632 when Muhammad died to Paris in 732, all in 100 years. My, We're talking with Bill Federer, uh, president of the uh, American... Uh, uh, Amerisearch and uh, host of the American Minute radio show throughout the United States. In the two minutes or so we have left, Bill, let's bring it back to the home front here and what uh, this threat might mean to the Americans and the Constitution of the United States. Let's bring it up to current times in this last couple minutes. Well, it's important to understand that a moderate Muslim thinks the world will submit to Allah later maybe in the distant future, maybe it's even figurative. And since it's so far in the distant future, they really don't take it that serious. And for them, it's okay to get along with the infidel. Uh, the fundamental Muslim, on the other hand, thinks the world is submitting to Allah now. And they're very excited. And they want to help make it happen. And that's where the violence comes from. Now, the dilemma for the West is the more we show ourselves tolerant and embracing of Islam, the more the moderate Muslims begin to rethink and say, wait a second, maybe the world is actually submitting to Allah now rather than later. And so they gravitate from the future peaceful moderate camp into the fundamental now camp, which is the violent camp. And so think of it. If you were a moderate Muslim that really didn't take it serious, that thought Muhammad was going to, you know, that the world was going to submit to Allah way in the distant future, and you begin to see America have the unprecedented thing of a president being named after Muhammad's grandson. The first male descendant of Muhammad was named Hussein. And then the president bows to King Abdullah, who's the king of Saudi Arabia, where Mecca is. So he's like the godfather of Islam. And then the president appoints Arif Allah Khan, who is this fundamentalist Muslim, to the Homeland Security. Uh, and uh, Kareem Shora and um, Dalia Magahed, an Egyptian lady from, from Egypt who uh, uh, wears a veil in the White House and was in, interviewed in London saying Sharia law is misunderstood. It's really gender justice. Mohammed permitted lying to advance Islam. Uh, he had a warrior who was captured, who renounced Muhammad, later escaped, went back to Muhammad. Muhammad forgave him, and Muhammad said, if they make your turn, turn, but don't turn in your heart. In other words, it's okay to deny Muhammad in a pinch to save your skin. It's okay to say you're not a Muslim in order to get elected, but then once you get elected, oh, you do everything you can to advance Islam. My, my, my. Bill Federer, the American Minute and Amerisearch, thanks for being our uh, resident historian here. We, you open our eyes more than we can say. Bill Federer. Well, uh, my, my book's What Every American Needs to Know About the Quran. Give us a website, too. Uh, AmericanMinute.com. AmericanMinute.com. Bill Federer. As we broadcast from WSRadio.com, the worldwide leader in Internet talk.